الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس و من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا, وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد I want you to think about someone you love someone you trust fully could be anyone really, doesn't have to be someone Muslim, doesn't have to be someone even you know personally, just anyone that whenever you think about them, you feel at peace, you feel like you can ask them anything at any time, and they will answer, They'll, they won't say no, they'll be there for you. Do you have someone in mind? Okay, now that you have someone in mind, I want you to think about yourself from their perspective. Do they see you the same way? Do they think about you the same way? Can they confide in you anytime with anything and you'll be there for them? Since we're all Muslim here, at least I hope so, uh, the answer for all of us should be yes, every single one of us. 
Because that's simply what Islam teaches us. SubhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ had the gift of being concise and straight to the point. In one Sahih Bukhari hadith, he said, so, fear Allah wherever you are. Do good deeds after the bad ones, and the former will wipe out the latter, and behave, uh, behave towards others with decency. This one hadith, this one hadith effectively summarizes the basics of our entire deen. The entire deen in one hadith, and here's how. Fear Allah wherever you are. That's your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do good deeds after the bad ones. That's your relationship with yourself. And behave towards people with decency. That's your relationship towards, uh, with other people. These three connections or relationships are, are the foundation of our deen, and which means we cannot really have a well-round, complete deen without achieving all three. And today, inshallah, I'm going to be focused mainly on the third relationship, because in, in my opinion, it is the most forgotten about topic, even though it is one of the most uh, important and stressed virtues of Islam. Decency. Uh, you know, a lot of the time we get stuck on topics that are much narrower in, or detailed, just like um, America banned ab abortion. What do we think about that? Or she's not wearing her hijab properly. He's drinking, whether he's eating kosher meats. He's not supposed to be doing that. And yes, these are all very important and big topics in Islam, but a bigger topic is, was I a decent neighbor today? Was I a decent friend? Was I a decent business partner? Was I a decent teacher, student, anything? Was I a decent random human being walking down the road? Maybe I saw a tree branch on the road blocking the way. I didn't pick it up. Maybe I did. Was I a decent pet owner? Did I feed my cat well, show him love and affection? Or did I kick him out, shut the door, and told him to stop meowing? Decency is included in almost every single aspect of our lives, which consequently affects our deen. You know the story about, uh, about the woman who was forgiven because she was good to one dog. I mean, this is a Sahih Bukhari hadith, true. Uh, the Prophet والسلام, uh, told the story once about a prostitute who was walking down the road and came upon a panting dog next to a well. He looked like he was about to die from thirst. The dog was about to die from thirst. So the woman stopped next to him. She took off her shoe, tied it to her headscarf, put it down the well, got some water, and gave it to the dog so he can drink out of her shoe. Allah forgave her because of that, because of that one, one act. Completely. I mean, did you hear what she did for a living? She sinned for a living daily, and it was all gone because she was saved because of an act of decency towards an animal. So, if this is, I mean, I'm not telling you uh, you can go, you can do whatever you want, and then you can feed one cat, and then you're good to go. But the point is, if this is the significance of, of being decent to an animal, then how is it towards humans? I can talk all day listing just a hadith and ayahs about the ajr of being uh, applying decency towards humans. I mean, even the simplest, uh, simplest terms like uh, smiling is charity. You can walk down the street smiling at everyone and just collect charity, hasanat. You can, I mean, removing obstacles from harm's way, that is also charity. There's many, many, many more. So. If that is what Islam teaches us, then why are we not known for it? Why are we not known for this aspect of Islam? I mean, if you ask an average American today, what do you know about Islam? Chances are you'll get one of two answers. They either don't know enough, or they'll tell you something around the, 
common stigma or the negativity that you know you hear online about Islam. And, and you know, even Sheikh Ba'ajur uh, once told me, he said, do you know how many people I get, how many businessmen I get that say I've only ever been hurt by Arabs or Muslims in my business? Why is it like this when it's supposed to be the exact opposite? What I want you to get out of this khutbah is inshallah, every single one of us today is going to leave and we need to completely, completely reconstruct the way that America views us as a society. We need to be seen how we're intended to be seen, not how, not how the media made us to look, or not how uh, people who called themselves Muslim but didn't do it well, you know, set the precedent for us. The way that's going to happen is by doing two things, by starting out by doing two things. Number one is simply practicing, to the best of our ability, applying the moral teachings of Islam in every aspect of our life. Practice decency everywhere. Treat others, treat others the way we want to be treated, every, every single time. And number two is by being proud of what we represent. I mean, the reason that terrorism is associated with Islam so heavily in America is because these terrorists, they, they, were, they attached themselves to Islam very closely and they, they said that they're representing it and they were very confident in what they're doing that people just perceive Islam through them. Why don't we do the same just from a different end? We should be vocal about who we are and why, why, we are, why we're being why we're practicing such great decency and, and morals, it's because Islam told us so. I know it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take some time. But with the amount of people here today, it is enough just to get started. You can, everyone here can go home, including me, tell all of their friends, their family, spread the word, start applying everything Islam that taught us about decency and character and virtue with everyone and that's a great start that's already that's already a head start to increase it uh, throughout the country inshallah um, and in a matter of a few years maybe you'll be scrolling down looking at housing uh, uh, trying to find a house and you look at the description and then maybe the description will say oh 5,000 square feet great backyard great location Muslim neighbors because the Muslim neighbors are supposed to be the best Maybe you look at job descriptions, and one of the descriptions says, uh, "Being Muslim is a plus." They're looking for to hire Muslim people because they show great character and virtue. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد. A couple months ago, subhanAllah, it doesn't feel like two months ago, but a couple months ago we, we lost someone who I believe was one of the best examples of what I'm talking about. Bilal Muhammad, may Allah grant him his mercy. He showed all of us how, how to apply the Islamic teachings in our daily life. He was humble, uh, decent with everyone and anyone that he meets, showed virtue in every act and deed that he did. And it's not just me saying that. You can tell that it was true because of the amount of people that knew him and the amount of people that showed up to his janazah and, and the amount of people that talked about him after he was a great character and example and when that when it happened he was a friend of mine and when it happened I wasn't as sad as I was angry because I was angry because we had just gotten 
to get to know each other more and we had just signed up for classes together and in my head I was looking up to him I saw the way he treated people I mean you could meet him today for the first time talk to him for an hour and he'll make you feel like you've known him for ever ever since you were born and that's not easy to do that's you have to be exceptionally humble to to be able to do that with every person you meet you can ask anyone and he'll, they'll tell you the same thing so in my head I was looking up to him and I, I, I he was the person that I wanted to start this change with that I wanted to show America what how Islam really is because he understood he was practicing in it practicing it he was doing it but he's also the reason I'm here today telling you all about it so that we can start it now we can start the change today always let your last act be an act of decency because you don't know what Allah has planned for you اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الكفر والكافرين يا رب العالمين اللهم ألف بين قلوب المسلمين على الحق يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أصلح ذات بينهم واهدهم سبل السلام وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم يا قوي يا عزيز اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وصنة نبيك يا قوي يا عزيز ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى استقيم وترصوا في الجابس الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين لإلاف قريش إلافهم رحلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البيت الذي أطعمهم من جوع وآمنهم من خوف الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر
سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله